Do we have a volunteer to uh, lead us in the first reading? Oh, it's the Psalm, sorry. I heard, I think I may have heard someone say that again. Karina. Karina, excellent. Sorry, I have it, I have it confused. It's Jeremiah, but please go ahead, Karina. <laughs> for Jacob and raise shouts for the chief of the nations. Proclaim, give praise, and say, O oh Lord, save your people, the remnant of Israel. Behold, I will bring them from the north country and gather them from the farthest, farthest parts of the earth. Among them, the blind and the lame the pregnant woman and she who is in labor together, a great company, they shall return here. With weeping, they shall come. And with please, please, for mercy, I will lead them back. I will make them walk by brooks of water in a straight path in which they shall not stumble. For I am a father to Israel, and Ephraim, Ephraim is my firstborn. Hear the word of the Lord, O nation, and declare it in the coastlands far away. Say, say he who scattered Israel will gather him and will keep him as a shepherd keeps his flocks. For the Lord has ransomed Jacob and has redeemed him from hand to strong for him. They shall come and sing aloud on the height of Zion, and they shall be redeemed. Say over the goodness of the Lord, over the grain, the wine, and the oil, and over the young of the flock, and the herd, their life shall be like water garden, shall be like a water garden, and they shall languish, languish no more. They shall then shall the young woman rejoice in the dance, and the young man and the old shall be married. I will turn their mourning into joy. I will com comfort them and give them gladness for sorrow. I will feast the soul of the peace with abundance and my people shall be satisfied with my goodness to care of the Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks, be, Thanks to God. be to God. And now the psalm. Do we have a volunteer to lead us in this? I'll be happy to read it. Great, Dorothy, please go ahead. How lovely are your dwellings. O oh, Lord God of hosts, my soul has a desire and a longing to enter into the courts of the Lord. My heart is in the living God. Indeed, the sparrow has found her a house, and the swallow a nest where she may lay her young. Even your altars, O oh, Lord of hosts, O oh, King of oh, my God. God. Blessed are they who dwell in your house. They will be always praising you. praising you. Blessed is the one whose strength is in you. In, in whose heart are your, heart ways. Are your way. Who going through the valley of misery uses it for a well. Indeed, the early rains fill the pools with water. They will go from strength to strength. And the God of God shall be seen by them in Zion. By them in Zion. O Lord God of hosts, hear my prayer. 
Hearken, O God of Jacob. God of Jacob. Behold, O God, our defender, and look upon the face of your anointed. For one day in your courts is better than a thousand. I would rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my God than dwell in the tent of ungodliness. For the Lord God is a light and defense. The Lord will give grace and honor, and no good thing shall be withheld for those who live a godly life. O oh Lord God of hosts, blessed is the one who puts his trust in you. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Amen. Next, the epistle. Who will be uh, who will volunteer to read this for us? I'd like to read that, David. Excellent. Please go ahead, Susanna. Ephesians 1, verses 3 to 14. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in Christ with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places, even as he chose us in him, before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and blameless before him. In love, he predestined us for adoption to himself as sons through Jesus Christ, according to the purpose of his will, to the praise of his glorious grace, with which he has blessed us in the beloved. In him, we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of our trespasses, according to the riches of his grace, which he lavished upon us in all wisdom and insight, making known to us the mystery of his will, according to his purpose, which he set forth in Christ, as a plan for the fullness of time, to unite all things in him, things in heaven and things on earth. In him we have obtained an inheritance, having been predestined according to the purpose of him, who works all things according to the counsel of his will, so that we, who are the first to hope in Christ, might be to the praise of his glory. In him you also, when you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, and believed in him, were sealed with the promised Holy Spirit, who is the guarantee of our inheritance until we acquire possession of it, to the praise of his glory. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Saint Matthew. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Now, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, in the days of Herod the king, behold, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem, saying, where is he who has been born king of the Jews? For we saw his star when it rose and have come to worship him. When Herod the king heard this, he was troubled, and all Jerusalem with him. And assembling all the chief priests and scribes of the people, he inquired of them where the Christ was to be born. They told him, in Bethlehem of Judea, for so it is written by the prophet, and you, O Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah. For from you shall come a ruler who will shepherd my people, Israel. Then Herod summoned the wise men secretly and abstained from them what time the star had appeared. And he sent them 
to Bethlehem saying, go and search diligently for the child. And when you have found him, bring me word that I too may come and worship him. After listening to the king, they went on their way. And behold, the star that they had seen when it arose went before them until it came to rest over the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they rejoiced exceedingly with great joy. And going into the house, they saw the child with Mary, his mother, and they fell down and worshiped him. Then opening their treasures, they offered him gifts, gold and fra frankincense, frankincense and ma, and being warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they departed to their own country by another way. The gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Praise Christ. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Let the words of my mouth, O Lord, and the meditation of my heart be always acceptable in your sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Amen. Amen. The wise men surprised the city of Jerusalem. And it was not just a surprise. They troubled the whole city, according to the passage. The people in Jerusalem were troubled when they saw them. And even King Herod was troubled by their arrival. King Herod was, was a bad man, he was not a good king. He was cruel, he was ruthless, murderer, and he wanted to destroy Jesus so that he can keep his power. He permitted no one, not even his own family, to, inter to interfere with his rule. At one time, King Herod killed his own wife and her two brothers because he suspected them of taking power from him, of trying to take power from him. Only him wanted to bear the title King of the Jews. These wise men, they are given this name wise men because they were educated. Some Bible teachers and scholars of the Bible have said that they were a group of scholars who studied the stars and loved following them and loved studying them. Other Bible teachers say they are not just scholars who are interested in the study of stars, but they were priestly scholars from East, whose study of the stars was part of their religion. And remember this time, Islam had not yet arrived in that area. So there were all kinds of religions that time. But there is something important to keep in mind as we read this passage, as we hear this story of the wise men from the East. 
they were Gentiles, not Jews. This is very important. And they had come to see the newborn king and worship him. In other words, they represented Gentiles. They came looking for something that would quench their spiritual hunger, that would satisfy their spiritual search. Something that was crying inside their heart. There was a, a spiritual virtue that needed to be satisfied. The Apostle Paul writing to the church in Colossae, chapter 2, verse 3 and verse 9. Paul said, In Jesus Christ, I hid all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. In him dwells all the fullness of Godhead. This is what these Gentile wise men, I'm sure they came looking for. Jesus the Messiah, Jesus the Son of God, was not just for the Jews, but was also the King of Kings and the Savior for everybody who chose to breathe in him. This is a very important message. And uh, some of the Jewish people could not understand that they could share their Messiah with the Gentiles. This was something they, it was hard for them to swallow or to understand. They thought Jesus, they thought the Messiah was their Messiah, and no one else. John writing in his gospel in chapter four, the gospel according to John chapter four, verse 42. He writes that from the very beginning, Jesus came to be the savior of the world. The wise men, after meeting Herod, after meeting the, the people in Jerusalem, and after being directed where Jesus was, they continued their journey. And they continued to follow the star that was guiding them. I do not know, I don't know what was in this star. I don't understand. I don't know what they saw in this star that made them to move from their country to come and worship Jesus. But, but I am sure the Holy Spirit was involved. The Holy Spirit was involved in this mission. The Holy Spirit was involved in what they interpreted in this star that was guiding them. There is something also very interesting about this miraculous star that I noted. In verse nine, or if, if you read carefully the passage, we read that this miraculous star was not always visible to these wise men. It would only appear when they moved towards the place where Jesus was. If they moved to another direction, the star would not appear. But if they moved towards where Jesus was, the star would appear. Very interesting to note this. 
I have listened to many testimonies of how people became Christians in my pastoral work in Rwanda. And I have found out that uh, many came or come to faith because they observed something. They saw something. They saw something in someone. There is something that pointed them. There is something that attracted them, that, that guided them and attracted them towards faith in Christ. People have a, a certain kind of star or stars that the Holy Spirit brings that points them and guides them to faith in Jesus. I don't know what you think about this, but you can find out or revisit yourself how you came to know the Lord. What happened? <laughs> how did it happen that you committed your life to the Lord? Was there something that you observed? Was there something that you can call a guiding star that led you to faith in Christ? For me, my star or stars that attracted me to faith, I can say that there are pictures and stories about the East African revival in Rwanda in the early 1930s the time when my parents became Christians and were converted. So the stories of the revival and the, the transformation in my parents, I can call all that guiding stars that brought me to faith. In verse 11 of the passage, when the wise men arrived, they saw the child, and Mary, his mother, and they fell down and worshiped him. They opened their treasures and offered the newborn king gifts. They gave him gold, they gave him frankincense and myrrh. These are gifts that are given to kings. These are valuable gifts that are made for kings. And uh, they affirm powerfully uh, who Jesus was. There is even a prophecy in these gifts. The gold was which is a very valuable metal, pointed to the kingship of our Lord Jesus Christ. He was king. Frankincense, which is a perfume, is used as an incense in the worship of God. So it points to worship. Ma is the common anointing oil used in many ways. You can do a research and find out about these gifts in dictionaries or on Google. There is a very interesting information about uh, these gifts. So ma is a common anointing oil, an oil for anointing, for anointing. When I was consulting commentaries, I loved the fact that it, it can be annoyed for anointing dead bodies, which means there is a prophetic message in this gift, in this oil that pointed to the death of our Lord Jesus Christ 
and the sacrifice he made for our sins and our salvation. So after giving these gifts, the wise men worshiped the newborn king and they returned back to their own country in another way. They didn't go back to Herod because they knew Herod was, I, the Holy Spirit told, you know, told them that Herod is a dangerous man. He can do harm to the newborn king. So they, they traveled another way, very interesting. They protected Jesus in that way. What can we learn from this message? I think this message, this passage is teaching us, is pointing us the right way to worship, the right person to worship. We may not be able to find gold. We may not be able to find these expensive gifts, but we can continue to honor and worship Christ, valuing his identity as king above all kings, affirming in our lives that Jesus Christ is the son of God and reminding ourselves of his identity as our crucified Messiah, who takes away the sins of the world. May God bless you.